Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Andy Lee. I'm your presenter for today. My talk today is divided into two parts. The first part is why bird watching, or why do people like me like to go bird watching? And the second part is on uh, urban bird watching. Let's get going. Okay, why bird watching? Bird watching is fun. There are big birds, little birds, colorful birds, and dull birds. It's really amazing. So this is a big bird, a hornbill. It is uh, about 191 to 122 uh, cm, a big bird. And then we have this uh, ground bird, a pheasant. Small little bird, like this sunbird, is only 11 to 13.5 cm. A little fast moving bird, colorful birds. And then we have also dull birds. And sometimes there are plenty of birds we can encounter. If you're lucky, we may see a raptor or a kingfisher. But if you look carefully at this kingfisher here, you will notice that the, the feather here at the top of the head uh, went up, is up here. So this bird is actually showing sign of uh, stress. That means the bird is trying to tell me, don't go so near, you're getting too near to, to me. I'm not comfortable. So this is a mistake that we should try to avoid. We must not get too near to the bird to stress them out. Oh, sorry, it's going backward. And then you may see a, a beautiful pita. Sometimes the pita are very, very colorful. Or if we are lucky, we may be able to encounter two wild jungle fowl fighting. Next, bird watching is not too expensive. So there are basically two tools you need. Of course, you need a pair of binoculars. So you need, we need the binoculars so that we can look at the birds from a distance. If you go too near to the birds, the birds will just simply fly away. And next, we need a few guides. We need a few guides to ID the bird. Each time when we look at the bird, we need to ID it. So we look at the few guides to get the correct uh, information. And of course, the next thing you need is a pen, a notebook, head, comfortable pair of shoes, and sometimes we may need leash socks and insect repellent. So this is a logbook where we used to where I go out. I use this to record the birds I see. And this is how it looks like. We have the date, the time, the location, and where do we go. And sometimes uh, in a hurry, we don't have, we, we cannot use the camera to capture the bird. We will sometimes uh, just sketch the bird out and put in the simple uh, few marks, the marks of the bird, and later we refer to the, the few guide to make the confirmation. And if we continue to do this for a long time, sometimes we may take up the, the hobby of bird sketching. So this is done by me, uh, an owl. And this is a much better photo than mine. Eh? This is a professional, <laughs> Mr. Tang. And next, this is a very healthy uh, hobby where it gets us outside and walking. We walk in the park, fresh air, and even little kids can have fun too. Bird watching is also an adventure. The search for birds can lead us to discovery of new places, creature, and plant life. I like this place because this is somewhere uh, in Nepal on the Lantang Trail. I walk, we trek for many days, and then we come to this uh, maybe Tibetan uh, temple or something like this. So out of nowhere, you see something like this, and it's real fun. And while going through, you see how people are living uh, in hmm, tough life. Uh, we are considered lucky to be Malaysian. And if you stand on top of the hill on this, uh, what we call it, Nichen, uh, these are some uh, fungus or something growing on either. And you look from on top of, of this place, you, and the view is very far away because the air is very clean uh, and you really feel you are on top of the world or almost on top of the world. <laughs> we are still about uh, 1,000 meters uh, from base camp. 
and it takes about four to five days by foot from here. And we may see some flowers, rare flowers, or even meet our distant uh, cousin. Sometimes we may find cheap food. Huh? This is uh, mi udang for 12 ringgit in the past, but now I'm sure it will be higher because of the COVID. Huh? And also bird, and also bird watching uh, gives friendship, provides friendship. Huh? Birding brings people together because we share a common passion, birds, and we also like our companion. So because of this, we can become good friends. So I like this picture. This was taken uh, many a few years back. Huh? I like this this uh, photo because it shows people from many countries. Huh? We have people from Switzerland, from Holland, from Japan, and Indian, and the rest, of course, uh, are fellow Malaysian. Huh? And also, it's a very it's an ideal of social activities. Sometimes <laughs> you may find ourselves having break breakfast uh, on boats huh? because we have to get up quite early in the morning, and then later we have our breakfast on. But it's really fun. In the night, we sit down and then we share our story, yeah? sharing what, uh, what happened, sharing knowledge. So it's interesting. And when there are no birds around, hmm, sometimes we find durian. Yeah? So we share durians. Bird watching also provides uh, data. This is something that I like very much. So it helps. We can, uh, we can help to provide uh, data to conversationists, researcher, bird watcher, ecotourism, etc. etc. And how do we do it? It's very easy. Each time when you go uh, birding, just submit your sighting to eBird or eBird Malaysia. So, what is uh, eBird uh, and what is eBird Malaysia? First, eBird. eBird is, uh, is created to collect uh, data to find out the bird abundance at this mission all over the world. So, and eBird Malaysia is the local platform for eBird. So what we do here is that when we, when we have submission, we make sure that uh, the submission, we, we verify the submission and make sure that the submission is uh, correct or else the data going into the system will be out. So here we have also uh, reviewers uh, from Wobble Club Malaysia, and also uh, from uh, M from uh, MNS. So if you are keen and you like to, <laughs> to be one of the reviewer, you can contact me. So what other uh, thing you 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 can you can uh, get connected to? You can get involved in collection of data from uh, through raptor counts. This is uh, in Tanjung Tuan every year and it will be on also this year. And then we have the what, uh, Asian Water Census is ongoing now, my garden will watch, and also Global Big Day. So Global Big Day is a day where all the people in the world go out bird watching. So in this way, we can, on this particular day, we can try to find out how uh, to get uh, the number of birds, try to get the number of birds in the world. So if you are keen in bird watching and you like bird conservation, so do join a bird group like uh, the Greece Semilan Malacca branch uh, bird group, or we call ourselves the Trogan. So in conjunction with uh, urban bird watching competition, which will be on the 6th February, 2021, uh, I'm here to take you on the tour or, or how we do a, a bird watching, bird watching, or where you can find the birds uh, here in, in the city. So before we start birding, we have to look at birding ethics and etiquette. So as a birder, we must believe in the welfare of the bird. We must be, believe in the welfare of the bird come first. Not only the, the welfare, and also the habitat. For without the habitat, there will not be any bird for us to see. And then when we are watching bird, we have to keep a reasonable distance from all, from all birds when observing. Move away when the birds begin to show display stress. It's just like what I 
uh, spoke about earlier regarding the king kingfisher. You notice that the kingfisher put up the crest. Uh, so it's very important that if the bird showing uh, stress, we have to move away from the bird. We should not stress them out. Very, very important is stay away from uh, nesting. Birds can abandon, ab abandon the nest if they are disturbed or harassed. And also uh, when repeated human visit close to the nest can also leave a patch, a path or a, a, a sand trail for the predators to follow. And this predator will eat up or they will destroy the nest. And also uh, not only uh, natural predators, we have also a poacher. Poacher will come in uh, to catch, to trap the birds, the mother birds or also the, the chicks. Uh. So we try not to uh, expose the nest too much, especially uh, photographs showing uh, bird, uh, bird nesting. Eh? So try not to post uh, it on the Facebook or somewhere because many people will see it. Eh? And the more people uh, come to know about the nest, the more danger the bird, these birds are subjected to. And very important is, uh, is the next thing is very important. Birders must or should be polite to fellow birders. Because birds do not perch in an open space where all can get a good view. So when you cannot build a, a good view, do not step in front of other birders so that you can get a better <laughs> a view. So it's important. Be polite to your fellow birders. Next, how do we spot the birds? So first of all, when you arrive in a, a place that you want to see the bird, you listen to bird call, the bird singing. Eh? When you hear the bird singing, you look towards the right direction and then you scan for movement. Movement. That means movement coming from the birds uh, with your naked eye. Once you find the, the position, only then you put up your binoculars eh, to have a look, to look, to get a better look. And if it is close enough for you, you can take up your uh, camera to record it. While moving around uh, to look for birds, do not make too much noise. If you make too much noise, the bird will run away. Uh, you cannot see them. Uh. Also, when you are watching the birds, do not make sudden movement. Minimize your movement. Do not move so much. If you move too much, again, this will frighten the bird away. So these are basic things uh, that you can follow and you will learn more as you go out. Uh, you're doing burning yourself in the field. So what gear do we need uh, for, for burning? Uh? So, we, so this is a photo of, uh, of me. So when you will see, most, sometimes when you see me in the field, uh, I'll be looking something like this. Uh. So first of all, for burning, we need a, a pair of binoculars, a few guides, a logbook here, maybe a camera, and a hat uh, to shield us from the sun. Sometimes it's pretty hot, uh, we need to, the hat. Then a white colorful uh, clothing, dark clothing like this, a comf comfortable pair of shoes, <laughs> water, umbrella, or raincoat, because the weather today is unpredictable. Okay, let's come to the actual part, uh, urban bird watching. Where to find these birds. Where can we find these birds? So number one, we can start from a backyard, means the area around our house. Number two, the housing estate, the residential area or our taman. Of course, inside the taman, we also have uh, many parks or playground. Here you do find birds too. Eh? And sometimes you find wetlands, eh? a pond, pool, uh, a pond, a pond, uh, water area like wetlands, uh, maybe within your, uh, the, your, your taman. Of course, the best place to go are to the city park, a place like Taman Tase Saraban, where you can find all the birds there. So let's start by coming, uh, starting from our backyard around our house. So what are the birds that we can see around our house? Because the first one is the Javan minor. These are very common. You can see them easily 
easily. Uh, this is the bird. It has a yellow beak and yellow eyes. You can see them very, very easily. So play close attention. And very close to this bird, looking very uh, similar, except that color is a little bit brownish and this eye patch. The difference between the German minor and the, and the common minor is the eye patch here and the eyes are yellow in color. Another bird that you can see easily, the Eurasian tree sparrow. Many people make the mistake and they always uh, call this bird house sparrow. So house sparrow is uh, quite very rare in, in, in peninsular Malaysia. You can only see in just one location in Northern, uh, Northern Park or in, in Palisa. So this is a Eurasian tree sparrow. They like to live uh, very near to the houses. Zebra dove. You see them walking everywhere. These are very, very uh, friendly birds. Huh? You can see them easily, a small bird. And quite similar, the spotted dove. The spotted dove, the, the, the difference between the spotted dove and the zebra dove is number one, the size. And number two, there is a black patch here with spots. Huh? So it's, you cannot make mistake huh, when you can you see this bird. Another bird that is really, really common, and sometimes it's so common that many of us do not pay attention to this bird. This is the house crow. You see them flying around everywhere in our taman. So this bird is actually not uh, completely black. Huh? If you look carefully, carefully at it, the neck area is a little bit uh, uh, grayish, huh? and the, the other parts are black, but there are some uh, yeah, a bluish uh, keen. Huh? So this bird is very easy to to ID and very easy to see to be seen. The Oriental Magpie Robin, they can sing very very well. Sometimes before we wake up in the morning, huh, they are already singing for us. Huh? This is a male. It's a male. The head is uh, black and very shining. Huh? The rest is this mainly is black and white. Huh? This this bird and this is. This is a female. The head is not as uh, dark. The rest of the, the body the same. And for all robins, uh, they like to keep their tail up, up this way. Uh. This is the characteristic of robin. And next is our house garden uh, or the flowers that we can see around our house. So this the first bird. So these are this is a olive back sunbird so they have quite long beak and they like to feed on the flower here because their beak are long enough to go into the inside of the flower to get the nectar so this is the male the male has got a dark, a, a blue patch a dark patch here and yellow underneath and the back is a uh, olive olive color and the female is not as uh, colorful huh? it is a uh, olive top and yellow at the at the bottom, and it's a very a, quite a small bird. Huh? Very close to to this olive bag is the brown throated sunbird. Basically, the bird, uh, the bird, the birds are quite similar, except that this the size of this bird is bigger, and then there's a brown uh, patch here. There's a brown patch at the throat. The female is the, almost the same, like the olive bag. <laughs> The ID point is the, the white eye ring here. It has got a, a, a eye, eye ring here, a white in color. <clears throat> Common tailor bird, as you know, the tailor bird are very good uh, tailor, or they can make very beautiful nests in our garden. So it's a small little bird with a long tail uh, and can make a very loud noise. So when you hear this loud chipping noise, uh, you can. Uh, start looking for the common tailor bird. Next, we can look at the fruiting trees. These are some of the palm that you can find growing in our garden. And this pigeon, the, the pigeons and other birds that like to come and feed on these uh, fruits. Huh? So the, the bird, that, the first bird, uh, bird that I like to introduce is the pink neck green pigeon. The male, very colorful. The female is uh, only mainly uh, green in color. The eyes are, if, you, if it's near enough, it's actually reddish in color. 
the ID for the male got a pink neck. Look carefully, a pink neck and a grey head. Eh? So it's a very quite easy to see bird around our garden. Ha, these are the Asian glossy starling. Eh? This bird is completely black in color and have a red eye. These are adult birds, eh? and the and the juveniles are well. They are not not dark yet. Yeah? When they go older, when they age, they turn to they turn their color to dark. But from young, they already have a black, a red eye, and they have streak at the bottom. Another bird is the Asian quail. This bird, they do not sleep. Huh? They, they they don't seem to sleep. Huh? They you can hear them calling in the morning, in the middle of the night, or in the morning. So the call is. Like the name, it, it, it sounds something that is quail, 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 and you hear them calling the whole night, the whole day long. So this is the male. The male is all black, all black, mainly black. The eyes red, and they got a silver uh, bill. Uh, the leg also uh, gray color. The female is completely different, but the shape of the bird is the same, still with the red eye, but it is brown with spots. You see brown with spots at the tail, long tail, similar, similar looking, eh? except the color is different. Another bird, the bubu. This is a yellow winter <coughs> bubu. This is very, very common. They are also very good song, uh, very uh, good uh, in singing, eh? good songbird. They can sing very, very well in the morning. Eh? They will be singing happily in the morning. So they love to eat, feed on the fruits. Huh? Sometimes before we can harvest our fruit, they are here to share it with us. The, the black name Oreo, this bird is very easy to ID here. Yeah? It's the only yellow colored bird in our, in our uh, taman. Huh? So this bird is yellow, like it has a black eye band, huh? like Zorro, huh? and the view is is red, reddish in color. They also, they, they will also come to share our fruits <laughs> if you do not harvest them. Next, we can find birds in the vicinity of our housing area. That means you can walk around or drive around the housing area where the area you can, you find uh, trees uh, or even they are sitting on the lamp pole like this. So on this lampo, you can find the birds. Huh? So the bird that is sticking on the lampo is the bun uh, swallow. The bun swallow is black and white, and there is a, a, a black black uh, necklace, a, a, a black band huh? on on the neck. Huh? And these birds are migrant. Huh? They will come. They will come to Malaysia during their winter. Their winter because winter is very cold in their country. They come. To Malaysia, uh, I think from the month of uh, September, end of August, September, until maybe April or end of April or beginning May, they will return to their country. So this bird looks very similar to our local bird, a uh, local swallow. This is a Pacific swallow. The Pacific swallow is very similar, except there is no black band eh, here. The rock pigeon, you can find them easily. Uh, they like to come to the to, to to you can see them easily around the, the temple where the, the people will feed uh, feed them uh, with the rice or some or, or some other grains. Uh, so you can see them very easily or near to some uh, shops. Uh, they come they come to feed. So the next, the bee eaters. This is the blue tail bee eater. The blue tail bee eater, the tails, the, the idea for a bird is the tail. The tail is uh, blue in color and it has got this uh, black band here. The throat is uh, brownish, uh, rufous color. So a closer look at this bird, the tail you see. The upper tail is, is blue, uh, the underneath of it is a uh, dark color. So this is the blue uh, blue tail bee eater, and this is a migrant as well as a resident. So during this period, you will find many of them here more than usual because they, they, the migrants are joining the local birds here. 
So another bird that is very, very, very uh, familiar, uh, similar to the blue tail is the blue throated. What's the difference here? If you look carefully, only the throat is different. Basically, the bird is just almost the same. Huh? The tail is blue. Only the what do you call that? The the throat. Huh? And a closer look. See the throat here. And they like not only they like to eat not only bees, huh? other insects also. They they will they will eat huh? like the dragonfly here. This is also a migrant and also a resident of Peninsular Malaysia. Brown shrine. These are migrant, fully migrant. Huh? You will hear them uh, calling very loud. Huh? They can call very loud. Huh? When you hear them calling, huh? then you can start looking for it. It's very easy to see them. Huh? Very, very common during this time, even in our garden or in the city park. Huh? So this is another photo, the side view. Okay, next we go to the playground or the mini playground that we have in our taman. Okay, the first bird I'd like to share with you is the white throated kingfisher. So this bird has got a red beak, a very, very red beak, big, very long, very big, red beak. And the throat is uh, white in color, huh? and the legs are also red. The rest is rufous and blue a back. So the side view, you see the throat is fully white in color. Very easy to ID this bird. You make a Sometimes when he, when he's flying away, giving an alarm call like <coughs> common Iora. There's only one type. There's no two type. Huh? So you look carefully. Once you see it, take a photograph. You can refer to the, your field guide. Huh? So this is a side view of the bird. So they feed on insect, hopping around huh? in the, the among the, the 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 branches, the leaves to look for. Insect. <clears throat> Another bird, the pride killer, triller. So is uh, this is the female. And the male is easier to ID. The male is uh, black and white. Yeah? This is the back of the of the bird. And this is the side view. You see this bird? It's only one of its kind, yeah? you cannot find another bird like this. So it's quite easy to find in our padang yeah? and in our uh, playground. The Malaysian pipe fentier, another bird. This is a very fast moving bird. Huh? You got a white patch here on the throat and a black uh, breast. Huh? So, why do we call them the Malaysian pipe fentier? You see, the tail is like a fan. So, when you open up the tail, huh, you can see it is really uh, like a fan, like a, a, a fan. Huh? So, this bird is quite dark in color you will not uh, make mistake eh, to ID the bird. Next, I'll take you to the city park. In the city park, you will be able to see all the birds you find in our, our uh, housing estate, eh, our taman. Eh. So, but you cannot find all the, all the you, 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 will, you will not be able to see all the birds in the, in the city park if you stay at home. So you want to see other birds, um, you have to come out uh, to the parks or to, to find these birds. So the first bird I'd like to share with you is the common flame back. This is a woodpecker. It's a woodpecker. It has got a, a red crest here. And how do we find woodpecker? So they like to stay, they like to uh, stick onto the, to the trunk of the tree or the big, the big branches of, of the tree yeah, to look for worms and insects. And sometimes when you hear the drumming, the drumming, that means the, 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 the woodpecker will pack, uh, will, will pack on the, on the logs uh, or, or, the, or, or the trunk uh, to, to get the worms. You will hear the knocking sound of tok, 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 tok. So when you hear this sound, you have to use your binoculars and you scan, scan near the, the, the main branch or the body uh, or the, tr the trunk to look for the bird. So it's a very beautiful bird. The next is the couple smith babette. This is a very small little babette and they like to stay on top of the canopy. Yeah? 
So most of the time we, are be, we can hear this bird, but it's quite difficult to see if you do not have a pair of binoculars. Huh? So this bird will be calling tong, 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 tong. It's one single note, huh? tong, 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 tong. So when you hear this, uh, this call or this sound, you just look for the, the bird. Huh? So this is a side view of the bird. So it's a very beautiful bird. Unfortunately, they like to stay very high up. Huh? So this bird is uh, uh, this bird is only 17 cm. Huh? It's a very small babette. Huh? And I believe this is the smallest babette in Peninsular Malaysia. Huh? A very small babette. And next I introduce you to the biggest babette in, in Peninsular uh, in Malaysia, maybe <laughs> Peninsular Malaysia, yes. This is a gold whiskers babette. The size is 30 cm. Huh? 30 cm is is a big big size. Huh? The bird is fully uh, mainly uh, green in color. So if it's hiding among the leaves, huh, it's quite difficult to see them. Huh? The bill is, is quite big size, huh? quite thick. Huh? You see this way. Huh? The diff, the the idea is a big bird, green in color, and then there's the rufous. Uh, oh no, sorry, it's red red patch here, and this. <laughs> This yellow patch here. So the bird is big bird. Huh? Next, we look at the flower pecker. This is a small little bird, little bird. We call them the flower pecker, one of its kind. So yeah, it's got a red uh, scarlet back. Huh? So you won't be able to. You see them, you can I ID them. So it's the, the rest of the body is a black and then it's white underneath. Small bird, fast moving. Beautiful. The scaly breasted monia. These are all uh, seed eaters. Huh? You can look at the mouth here. They like to feed on seed. Huh? So in a part in our park, a city park, where can we find them? You so you go to the grassland. In some area you have those grass, huh? there's a lot of uh, seed. Huh? So you can find them there. And this bird is completely um, brown at the top and you find scale at, at the bottom. Huh? So this is a scaly breasted. Monia, very beautiful bird. Do look out for it when you're out there. Very few people. So these are plain looking bird. You see them, the name very few, a lot at the very few during the, after the harvest, you can find them. Or you can see them running around our parks, huh? our, 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 our city park. Huh? Most of the time you find them on the ground. Or, or the, they are always on the ground. So you, you see, because they are, they are not much shade. Eh? So sometimes at the afternoon when you see them, they will be opening their mouth eh? to cool themselves down under the hot sun. This is the raptor. The crested serpent eagle is a very big bird. Eh? It's an eagle. So it's easier to, to see them flying. Eh? Uh, soaring up in the sky yeah, around midday then to see them perch. Yeah. So look out for this bird. Yeah. The black tie falconet. These are very small raptor. Yeah. Very, very small raptor. You can see them usually perch in the top of the tree or at some dead tree at the, at the highest point maybe. And this is a side view of the of the bird. And see the, the tie here is black. The size of 15 to 17 cm. Huh? They are the smallest raptor in the world. So we have it here in Malaysia. Huh? This is a black tie falconet, and you can find it in Upper Taman. Next, we look at the wetlands, huh? the wet area, the ponds, the lake huh? in, in, in the Upper Taman. Huh? You will see um, Water birds, huh? this is a white breasted water hen, the breast is white. And you see them sometimes walking on the, on the what do you call it, these are the dili. Yeah? And you notice that the feet, huh? they are have got very broad feet. Huh? So they can actually walk on the leaf huh? and they don't go down, huh? this, they won't sink. These are very shy bird. If you go too near, they will disappear. Huh? They will run away very, very fast. Striated heron. It's a little, it's a heron. So this bird is very easy to see them. Once you see them, 
if you do not make too much uh, noise, they will stay still like this. Very, very still for you to have a good view. Do not go too near. So you can, you can get near to the bird, but slowly yeah, you move step by step and don't rush towards the bird. So most of the time they will stay for you to, to see, give you a good time uh, to capture the photo. Sometimes when you walk around the park, uh, you will find a lot of uh, white bird, uh, these white uh, egrets, uh, white bird along the, the side of the, of the, of the pond. Uh. So the first one is a little egret. This is an egret. You notice that the whole bird is a uh, white in color and then you got a black bill. Uh. The legs are also black and the ID thing uh, is the feet here. You see, he has got a yellow feet. Eh? He's like wearing a yellow stocking. Eh? So when you see uh, this uh, white bird, black leg with yellow stocking, eh? that is, uh, is a little eagle. The next I would like to show you, this eagle also, we call this the cattle eagle. So this photo I was taken sometimes back. Eh? So it's not easy to find a buffalo these days. Eh? The buffaloes are being re replaced by machine. Eh? So these days you can't find so much. And these cattle egrets, they like to come to the buffalo, or they like to go to the, to the back right, to feed on the parasite you know, some, or some insect that is attracted there. Sometimes the miner also, they like to come to share. So how to ID this bird is also completely white. The point is here. The beak is yellow and got, uh, what do you call that, yellow, uh, Iris. And during the breeding season around this time, the, this bird will change completely yeah, to a rufous head. Here it's very easy for you to ID. You see a bird like this, it's a cattle, cattle egret. And this is my last slide. It's a purple heron. So these birds you find most of the time, see them with the head sticking out. Huh? So if you, in this grass here, you can see that with the head sticking out. It looks like a snake, <laughs> just look like a snake <coughs> from far. So this is a better photo of it. So the birds are actually quite beautiful. Huh? And many times you'll see them flying uh, if you get too, too near. So I've come to the end of my talk here. I would like to thank the following people for sharing their bird photo with me. Eh? Not all the photos you see are mine. So they are coming from Mr. Tang. Sulaiman, Sarah Ovanan, Colonel Sudi, Dr. Chan, CTD, CTD Gerard. So CTD and, and, and Gerard, they are our, our very own uh, Sraman uh, bird, uh, our, our club bird, uh, bird, bird, bird. So then we have also uh, Waiman, Jamel, uh, Liu, and uh, Lily. So before I leave you, I'd like to share this. Uh, uh, photo of addicts uh, that is before and after. So if you are alcohol addict, marijuana or cocaine, in the very beginning you are very uh, uh, pretty or handsome, pretty handsome, and then after some years you will become old and haggard, like these photos here. But if you are addicted to, if you if you are a, a bird addict. In the very beginning, you may not look too happy eh, when your papa or your mommy force you or take you out birding. Eh? You'll be complaining very hard, a lot of mosquitoes, whatnot. But as soon as you notice the bird come to you, eh, or when you can see the bird, eh, you'll be happy, you'll be smiling. <laughs> okay, guys, thank you for at your attention. I will, have, I will pass the, the mic back to the rest. Thank you very much. Stay safe. I will have to stop my recording. Stay safe and take care. See you next time. Bye.